my name is Aiden Carney. So known as Turtle Boy. He is a senior editor for Turtle Boy Daily News. I'm a big fan. So we've broken hundreds of stories uh, that the mainstream media won't touch. From blogger in Massachusetts who's getting to the bottom of this better than anybody. Why is it Turtle Boy that is covering such important issues? Where is the rest of the media? You need to not say that you are going to take my baby out of revenge and make him a transgender baby. Stop it. Don't you want to ask some questions? I know you do. I do. I, I know you do. People don't like the things that I say and want me to stop saying them. But I won't. I'm never going to stop. These are the kind of stories that must be told. I will not be silenced, and we will continue on our journey for justice for John O'Keefe and for Kyron Green. Tick, tick, boom. Karen Reed has supporters who've shown up in large numbers. Tick, tick, boom. Hard body, body, and not scaring nobody. You make me result to wild, and you must be blind by the diamond side. I want it to be this way, but y'all won't need to try this. So it's no way around it. You the loudest one is going quiet. Serving a peace, working we serving the streets. About to go ahead, go in peace. Bang, bang, leave you sleep. This is the first time I think I've ever seen this. An outpouring of support for someone accused of murdering a Boston police officer. Unbelievable situation. Never seen anything like it. Tick, tick, boom. You can't stop me, so who gon' stop me? You can't stop me, so who gon' stop me? We be disturbing the peace. Working, we serving the streets. About to go ahead, go in peace. Bang, bang, leave you sleep. Boom! What's up, turtle people? How's everyone doing out there tonight? Good, good, excellent. Welcome to the live show, ladies and gentlemen. I am your fearless host. Uh, my name's Aiden Carney, pronounced Carney, not Kearney. Uh, Aiden Carney. Uh, some people call me Clarence with Emerson. That's my Facebook name. You can follow me on that. I'm just going to dip this a little lower. How about that? Does that work? That works. All right. Uh, Clarence with Emerson on Facebook. You can follow me on there. Other people, old school turtle riders, they call me Uncle Turtle Boy or Unk for short. Uh, I prefer Dr. Turtle Boy because it's kind of cool being called doctor. I don't know if you can just do that now because if Jill Biden gets to be called doctor, then I definitely get to be called doctor. Uh, that's my Twitter handle, at Dr. Turtle Boy, D-O-C-T-O-R Turtle Boy. Join the fun on there. Or some people just call me daddy. Uh, I don't care what you call me. Just be here every Tuesday and Saturday night. I know it's a Wednesday, but usually every Tuesday and Saturday night. I went to the Red Sox game yesterday. Didn't feel like going live afterwards. Uh, sh and by the way, awesome. Dude, it was wild. You guys see this video from the Red Sox team? Let me show you this if you haven't seen it already. Um, so we, sat, I, we got bleacher seats. I haven't been to Fenway Park in years. I hate Fenway. It's the worst stadium in baseball, first of all. It's every seat is angled towards the wrong way in Fenway. Like nothing, no one is pointed towards home plate. No one, I'm convinced, in the whole stadium. I, I, when they built this stadium a thousand years ago, people must have been a lot smaller. They didn't have Wendy's back then. And the seats are all small and wooden. And the place sucks. Like every, every other team, it has like a nice new park built like – Camden Yards is probably one of the oldest in baseball. It's wicked nice. It's where the Orioles play. 
Ours sucks. Like it blows. It Fenway Park blows. And people are like, oh, I like the nostalgia there. And I like the, you know, okay, well, you go home and beat off the nostalgia then. Okay. It blows. Every seat there sucks. And, but I, anyway, and I, but I used to like the Red Sox and I, you know, 2018 World Series fully on board. And then this guy, Chime Bloom came in. And I remember during the BLM shit, in 2020, he was just like, he had, they did the MLB draft and he had like a big BLM picture in his freaking uh, draft room. And it's like, Oh, for fuck's sake, I see what they're doing here. And then they were just, they're all in there with the the globe. They're just a bunch of pandering douchebags. So I just, I'm just anti Red Sox and they suck too. They suck. Like, let's be honest. I went there yesterday. I watched the game. The only one I know is Devers. I don't know anyone else in this goddamn team. I looked at the team. I'm like, wait, I've heard of Cassis before. I've heard of him. But like the rest of the team, I'm like, who the fuck? Who is Duran? Like, who Who are these guys? Some guy, O'Neal. I'm like, is that Paul O'Neal? Is he on our team now? He hit a home run. It was cool. Yeah, we got, beat, we got beat by the Orioles. They're better than us now somehow. But anyway, it was nice to go there for the social atmosphere. That and, and I was happy to do that because people do like the Red Sox and they get rowdy over them and it's a fun environment to be around. And anyway, uh, so I go there and it was just wild. Like I'll show you guys walking up the stairs. Check this out. Now, now people are like, oh, you, you brought your own camera guy? Yeah, my camera guy goes everywhere. Richie, he's awesome. You might have seen him around. I don't like He just, he, he, he came with us, right? And of course he's going to film. He wants to get all, he documents everything. And thank God he does because he gets some good footage. And if he sees some shit happening like this, like this is interesting. Like, check this out. The, the, the crowd went nuts. Oh, my. Innocent man. Innocent man. <laughs> Free Karen Reed. Free Karen Reed. Free Karen Reed. <laughs> This was awesome. And then everybody, we're all taking pictures, having a good time. You guys make a point. All right. So, anyway, that was fun. So, anyway, that was cool. So, we took pictures for like four or five minutes there, and it was nice to be with the people. That never gets old, by the way. I love that stuff. It makes me feel appreciated and valued, and I can't tell you how awesome uh, I appreciate that stuff. So very, very, very uh, cool being there. Mr. Cheap Seats, they ain't that cheap. But, you know, I like to keep it real with the peeps. You know, the common man. I don't do the box seats. I do the common man shit. So, um, and honestly, they're not that bad. The bleacher seats are better than third base. Every, you got a third base seat in, uh, no, first base. Like upper grandstand right field. Those are the worst seats in the park. Like they blow and every seat faces a pole. Like you're looking at a pole. There's a pole blocking and you got like home plate is this way. And you're like the whole game, you're sitting like this in your wooden seat in Fenway. And then somebody stands up. Oh, for fuck's sake. Everybody's got to stand up. It's one of those places. But it was really cool, man, to be out there. And uh, you realize with shit like that, like that, I got that throughout the park wherever I went yesterday. Everyone was coming up to me. It was awesome. And you know what they're all saying? Like a lot of people are like, dude, you did your time, man. Like, that's crazy that you went like people are like you went to jail, like going to jail gave me like a lot of street cred, if you will. And, but more than anything, it shows that I'm damn committed to this cause. I did 60 days. I'm damn committed to this shit. And when, what you saw there in that video, that's real life. That's what life is like in the real world. When you go out, that's all I get is positivity. I have never got a negative thing. Not a single person has ever come up to me, maybe besides Brian Riccio, but he's dead now. Thank God. Uh, maybe besides Brian Riccio, they never show their faces. They never say shit to your face. So all this shit talking on Twitter, nobody says anything. I see these people. I see Ken Dougal a lot. I've, I've escorted him to his car before. Never has anything to say. He goes on Twitter. He's got a whole lot of shit to say all of a sudden. It's just different. And by the way, Ken, do you guys know that the Dougal's dad went to jail? Let me check this out. And these guys judge Karen Reed. We got to talk about this. North. Uh, all right. <clears throat> uh, 
There it is. Check this out. All right. What happened here? So North Adams man sentenced to 18 months in Berkshire jail for third drunk driving conviction A 53. What do we have here? A 53 year old man. Cause you guys know that the, the Dougals are from Florida, Massachusetts, the town of Florida. There's a town called Florida. It's in the Northwestern quarter it border. It's in the East bumfuck. The hairpin turn on route two is in Florida. It's crazy. And that's where the Dougals are from. And this is their dad. And he said, a 53-year-old North Adams man was ordered to serve 15, 18 months in the Berkshire County House of Corrections after pleading guilty to his third drunken driving offense. Paul Dougal was ordered by Judge Agosny <coughs> to serve one and a half years, third offense, probation, blah, 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 single car accident. He drove off of Route 2, struck a guardrail, and went into a ditch. And these people, these Dougals, have the nerve, have the nerve to sit here and be like, Karen Reed's a drunk driver. Bitch, you were raised by a drunk driver. Stop it. At least my daddy's not in jail for drunk driving. Convicted, by the way. My, I went to jail, no convictions. No convictions whatsoever. Bail revocation, the bootleg jail. Doesn't even count. Doesn't even count. So anyway... That's Carl Dougal's family. That's where he's from, Florida, Massachusetts. But I digress. And also enjoying Ratchet Madness so far. It's been, you guys enjoying this? Is this your first uh, Ratchet Madness tournament? Uh, if you guys haven't voted yet, uh, vote in our newest one. What do we got here? Let's see. I think all the favorites are winning. Like all the favorites have won in the other two regions. I've never seen this before. But we, I think we have an upset brewing. In this one, I'll tell you right now. I'll tell you the winners are going to be tomorrow. But um, like, look at Chris Albert, fucking killing it, dude. Ninety-eight percent. That's wild. Look at these percents. So anyway, down here, <coughs> uh, okay. Colin Albert's got again. He's got like ninety-seven percent. He's another one killing it. Um, this one, Wendy Murphy is winning by a lot here. She's going to win. And this one, it's going to be Jackie Dougal's winning by a lot. She's going to win. This is the upset. Julie Nagel's winning right now. This is going to be our first major upset. J How the fuck does Jim Ferris lose in the first round? Jim Ferris, he's like the, he's so ratchet. Have you seen his car? Have you seen his Prius? Which is the funniest thing in the world. This motherfucker drives a Prius. <laughs> oh, so there's Jim Ferris. Um, obviously, Meatball Morris, he's going to advance. Uh, Grant Smith Ellis is going to advance. And by the way, if you guys didn't see the post, so I am going on <coughs> Law and Crime Network tomorrow. It's a whole TV channel. And I was on there a few weeks ago. And uh, Anjanette Levy, uh, one of the show hosts there, uh, you know, we've been in contact. And she wants to host a debate on the Karen Reed thing. And so I said, sure, absolutely. Anytime, any place, I'll debate anyone. And she goes, okay. So from the other side, uh, I think we're going to have the guy, uh, Grant Smith-Ellis. I go, you know, he's not like a serious person, right? Like it, I was hoping to get like a serious person, but then again, there aren't many serious people on their side. There aren't, you know, I was hoping to have somebody who's just like one of these TV rubes who just is misinformed. It doesn't know the facts. I was hoping to have somebody like that. Instead, I got this clown, right? Now, you know, again, anytime, any place, anyone, whatever. If you want to debate, we can debate. We're going to stick to the facts. If he starts ranting about bullshit, about like, are you an FBI informant? And, oh, my God, did you uh, did you d d key the fake victim's car? If we start doing I'm going to be like, dude, let's stick to the facts here. Let's stick to the facts. We're not going to deviate here. So it's going to be aired Monday or Tuesday, she said. So I will be doing that tomorrow. Uh, and And by the way, I'm so sick of the other side saying, that we're turning this into a circus when they come in with Grant Smith Ellis. Like the more I think about that and they, and they bring in, you know, people who can eject me from court, like on purpose, like how is that not turning it into a circus? Like this is a game to them. 
this whole thing, and they're all like, this is a really serious thing. We're here for justice for John O'Keefe, and the other side doesn't care. Bitch, you're the side coming with Grant Smith Ellis. Stop it. Stop it. You're the side. You're bringing it. You're fucking digging up chicks from my past and shit and like bringing them to court. And I'm, and I'm turning into a circus. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. But anyway, back to the uh, situation. So anyway, if, if, if anybody, and, uh, so Grant's winning, uh, Kenny Berkowitz is winning and obviously Lizzie Proctor's winning. So the favorites are all winning. Anyway, um, if anybody wants to donate to the program, you can click on the link at the top for something called Turtle Chat, and you can donate whatever amount of money you want. When you do that, you get to write a little message. I will get that message in my inbox, and I will read it out loud to the class. Or you can cash at me at dollar sign Uncle Turtle Boy. So let me, we got a couple here right now. Let me read them. All right, first one says, uh, thanks to Ryan Joseph for mailing me a free Turtle Boy sticker from my cooler. This is from Kate. Turtle Riders are the best people. Free Turtle Boy, free Karen Reed, justice for John O'Keefe. Thank you very much, and shout out to Ryan Joseph. Uh, Michael sends 20 bucks and says, seeing that the Commonwealth is completely corrupt, do you worry Morrissey could rig a jury? No, I'm not worried about that. They, I mean, that's, come on. How do they do that? How do you rig a jury? Again, I don't even think they want a conviction. I don't think they give a shit about a conviction. I can't read. This is just a dog and pony show. The whole purpose of this stupid trial is to prevent, uh, you know, the cops from having to arrest the McAlberts. That's the entire purpose of this. That's why I'm against it. So uh, next up, next turtle chat is from Nancy sends 10 bucks. Says, Stay strong. Free Karen Reed, free Turtle Boy. Thank you very much, Nancy. I appreciate that. Next one's from Paulie since 25 says, I hope the very worst for Plevin and the rest of the anti Karen Reed chuds. I have been at the edge of my seat for over a year, just waiting for this end. I know it's coming. You know what, Paulie? I know it is too. And the more I think about this, I was having a chat yesterday <coughs> with some people. And I, I agree with this theory. Um, I think that, I think that the feds are just giving them enough rope to hang themselves. They want to see what they want to see how far they're going to push this. They're like, let's just see what these motherfuckers do. What are they going to present at trial? What can we get them on? And if the pro the prosecution, I assume, goes first. So I'm going to guess, you know, we'll see what they, that, that I think there's a possibility that Levy comes out with indictments halfway through. Dude, Josh Levy's a serious dude. He's a serious dude. Look at his body of work. Look what he's taking down. Look what he's doing. He's a reformer. There is no way. He's going to invest this amount of resources if they don't know something's up. They th This amount of time, too. They know something's up. I don't know what they're doing. I have no idea. But I do know that these are serious people, and they're not going to waste their time on bullshit. They're, they're just not, man. And just be like, well, we you gave it a shot. So all these idiots out there are like, the feds found nothing. These are the same morons who, you know, three months ago were saying the investigation's over. It turns out it wasn't. Turns out it wasn't. The investigation's not going to be over for a while. They're going to, even after indictments come, the investigation will, will continue. And like Jamie says, they have a 95% conviction rate. And, and that's because they don't indict people that they can't convict. And they will be, they're, they're going to get, they're, they're not telling you, this ain't going to fly. They know shit. All you got to know, is that they got their phones. The fact that we found this all out, that like, oh shit, they got Proctor's phone? I didn't know that. Oh shit, they got Brian Albert and Brian Higgins' phones? Fuck. Fuck, what do they got on there? You know, the, the, as soon as I heard that, that they got their phones, I'm like, it's over. They got, they have so much shit on them. It's over. They're going to get them. They're going to get them. So I have no doubt the feds are coming. These idiots who are like mocking us for that. Oh, the feds are, or the chopper is coming. Shut up, Plevin. I, I don't even make fun of Plevin on here because he's beneath me. Who the fuck is Plevin? He wins when I even mock him. I enjoy watching the glare do that for me instead. 
highly recommend his Plevin shows. They're very funny and very entertaining. And he just had the two biggest fucking TikTok morons on there the other day. That boundless millennial guy. I debated him a few months ago. And it was like Grant Smith Ellis. It was just like fucking destroyed him. That made him look like a complete fucking moron because he is. <laughs> if you are, I don't even know if that's archived anywhere or if you could watch that. But I shredded him. And then she had the 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 day drinker lady, the box wine lady. I don't even know her name. Her name's Karen, I think, right? Karen, I was told her name is. She's the box wine lady on TikTok. She's a grown woman who prides herself on her TikToks. That that's that's really all there is to say about that, isn't it, folks? <laughs> It's just like, and she begged me to come on her shit. She begged me so many times. Oh, come on my show. Come on. No, I'm not going on your show. TikTok lady. Okay. Day drinker, box wine lady, relax, relax. And then I think I made fun of her or something like that. And then next thing you know, Karen Reed's guilty. <laughs> it always works out like that. The second I make fun of them and it just, Karen Reed suddenly becomes guilty. It's so weird how that happens. It's so weird. And she, I thought it was Kofin Daver. When I saw it, I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Kofi Davis slumming it this bad. She's going on Plevin's show. Holy shit. She must really need attention. It's like, oh no, it's just, they all look like that. Don't they? They all look like that. So anyway. Oh yeah. I met Lisa Ox uh, Oaks or Ox. I met her. She was great. She works at Fenway. It was great to see her there. And did you guys know Grant works there too? <laughs> Grant works at Fenway, but uh, luckily I didn't see him. All right. Um, did Christy apologize to you for what? Oh, Christy Citroni? What was she apologized for? Uh, I'll show you. Like Christy Citroni is this anti. She's another one of the flippers on there. And so I brought. She says to me. All right. Let me see what she said. This troll says. So I made fun of the Dougals for their dad going to jail, obviously. And she chimed in. So she goes. Ahem. Speaking, so they. By the way, they're they're showing my text messages here, and this is like a tech a, a, exhibit O in this. The let me read this to you, okay? So this is a text message I sent on November twenty eighth to the fake victim, okay? And they got this because we entered my texts into evidence at the restraining order hearing. So they got them all. <laughs> they got them all, all of them, but they got this one. This is the only time I talked to her about the feds at all. And you know, I probably shouldn't have fucking talked to her about it, but it meant nothing. Like I was just, I, I had heard news that day. And, and, and what I say here is not completely accurate, by the way. I said, uh, I said they requested a conference call, the feds, over the weekend, jo Josh Levy himself, asking questions like, is there any chance the trial could be delayed? There's only one reason to ask that. And these idiots are like, oh, gotcha, gotcha. The feds were trying to, the feds are obstructing justice. The feds are trying to delay the trial. No, I think when I heard that, when I heard that Josh Levy or whoever from the AUSA's office was asking the Karen Reed defense team, is there any chance the trial could be delayed? There's only one reason to ask that question. Is because like we need more time. Like we're building a case here. Is there any chance she'll delay this? Now they can't ask the judge to delay it, but they just wanted to know like is there any is there any chance this gets they, they needed a timetable basically how much time we got when I heard that. That's it. Because you you know so obviously you know, don't fucking talk, like don't, uh, lesson learned here, don't tell state secrets to <laughs> crazy bitches, like, but, uh, but either way, when this came out, it's like, you think this is damning, motherfucker? This is, this is bad for you guys. <laughs> this is like, this is like, oh shit, the, the feds are for real. The feds are doing an active investigation. The feds are having fucking meetings with the defense and people are like, oh, the, the defense is in on it. The defense went to the, went to the feds and the feds are, you know, uh, the feds are like corrupt and cause they're doing this and they're partnering with them. Motherfucker. If, why do you think 
they're talking to the, if they're talking to the defense, why what does that tell you? Who is the target here? Not Karen Reed, obviously. Not Karen Reed. The target is the people on the other side. And the feds are not having, if Josh Levy himself, the fact that he's involved in this means it's fucking big. Whatever the fuck it is, it's big. And yeah, I, I, sh- I shouldn't have fucking talked to this chick about this shit, but I was so excited about it. I'm like, oh shit, this shit's going down. This bi-. When I heard that, I'm like, this means business. And whatever, I, I didn't want, this came out because I didn't expect a month later to be in jail. I didn't expect that to happen, but shit happens. And, you know, these idiots think this is some type of like bad thing. They're talking about asking for all communications with the DA's office. They're asking for Jen McCabe's cell phone records to be sent to them as soon as they get them. Keep in mind, the feds likely have Jen's cell phone records already. So they may want to see them because they suspect whoever hands them over to the defense will delete things that don't match up with their records. You see what the feds are doing here? And again, you know, yeah, I know I need to shut up. Okay. I need to shut up. I get it. I talk too much sometimes. Lesson learned. Lesson learned. Um, and then what does this say? This is all stuff Ted Daniels got from court today. What is it? Holy shit. 135. Oh, he got the motion to dismiss. Oh man. How do I get this? Oh, it's all redacted and shit. What is going on here? A lot of this looks like, okay, I'm going to need time to look through all this. Okay. Um, Anyway, where was I? So yeah, back to this message here. So I, what else did I say in the text? I said, oh, so like this, so they, the feds, remember when Karen Reed's team got, they won the motion to get Jen McCabe's records. And so they got to hand over the phone records of Jen McCabe. Now the feds have Jen McCabe's phone. We know that. So why would they want Jen McCabe's records? No, they want to see, is the Commonwealth deleting anything? We're going to compare what the Commonwealth hands over to what we got. And then if they're not handing anything over, boom. So that's the kind of shice, that's the kind of, that's how the feds are conducting their investigation here. They already know everything. They've already read, and they just want to see, and I'm convinced that they already know everything. And they're just, they're going to let the prosecution, I truly believe they are going to let the prosecution lie. They're just going to be like, go ahead, motherfucker, lie. See how much you, we know everything. How much are you motherfuckers going to lie? Go ahead, hang yourself. I, I really truly believe that's what they're doing here. They are just allowing this to happen. And I think that there is a chance that, uh, you know, somewhat through like halfway through after that, the feds just come in and be like, nope, over indictments coming. So that, that's just what I believe. It might not happen. It's a guess. I'm not one of these guarantee guys. I'm just optimistic. I'm motivated every day when I wake up and I read Sean and the Gulf's tweets and Lena Del Turtle's tweets and, of course, Olivia Lambo's tweets. And I just get excited. I just get excited. But, again, you know, anyway... We'll see what happens. Oh, and oh, what else did I say in this message? I said, I go, the feds likely have Jen's, uh, so they may they may want to see them because they suspect whoever hands them over. The defense will delete things that don't catch up. The mere fact that they are the ones out ones seeking out Karen's lawyers tells you this is far from over and they want more info on this case. Levy allegedly asked them, if you are contacted by the media, in the next coming days, we would appreciate if you did not mention us working together. Oops. Oops. And this is why I no longer, of course, have access to Karen Reed is because I opened my big mouth to somebody I shouldn't have. <laughs> and I blew it. I blew it. I blew it. But, you know, we'll be fine. Her and I will be fine. Um, 
<laughs> I wasn't, I didn't think this would happen. I'd never pictured a day when this it's a, a bad breakup happens and then they run to fucking Brian Tully. Like I never pictured that fucking happening. I guess I should have. I guess I shouldn't have been so naive, but shit happened. Shit happened. Either way, this is still when I when I found this out, I'm like, oh shit, got him. Got him. Uh so anyway, I I I can't caught, you know, Ken Dougal shares this. Like, it's like, oh shit, that's a big thing. I'm like, bro, that's a self-own, what you just said right there. All you did is is post a text that I sent the fake victim that confirms a federal investigation into the state police and DA's office. So what's up with that? And then this chick, Christy Citroni, who is another one of these flippers, used to be free team Karen Reed, says, ahem, speaking of dads going to jail, how is your case coming along? Oh, well, Christy Citroni, here's a message that you sent me on December 12th. Oh, yeah. Oh, there it is. Let's see what she said. This is the last message she sent me. Oh, yeah, I donated when you were arrested and tried to help when I heard stuff I did. I'm keeping an open mind. I changed my mind a lot. But like I said, my opinion doesn't matter. I apologize if I pissed you off. And I'm so sorry that happened to you at the bus stop. That was shitty, and I do think it's bogus. So she agrees that my arrest was bogus, and she gave me money. Christy Citroni gave me money because she knows I'm not guilty. And she knows this is all bullshit. All these people are so full of fucking shit. At least she says she did. I take the Constitution maybe too serious, especially the first and second. Eh, you really don't. Uh, the second more so. But you have balls. Huge balls. That's accurate. That's certainly accurate. So anyway, that's uh, the typical kind of person on the other side. So thank you, Christy Citroni, for the donation. Okay. Um, next donations from Nancy says, stay strong and fuck Auntie Bev. Absolutely. We got another one here from, uh, let's see. Scott sends 10 bucks Says Auntie Bev is a clear and present danger, but she does not care. Her loyalty lies with her boss, the Massachusetts mono party Democrats and fat cat DA Morrissey. She will go down for them. That would be awesome. If Auntie Bev went down too. come on. We're going to talk about her tonight. That corrupt piece of shit. Okay, next one. M sends five bucks. Says, I'm really looking forward to seeing Grant's cope after the debate tomorrow. I personally love the mental gymnastics he does after each L so he doesn't have to face the facts. He fails. or I mean, he's just not a serious person. You know, like on February 23rd, he guaranteed that I was going to go back to jail. He guaranteed it, right? And then I didn't. How do you ever show your face again after making a guarantee like that and then it doesn't come true? How many guarantees it? After he got caught, remember he lied, He was at the restraining order hearing on January 8th. He live tweeted the whole thing. He was the only, you know, person live tweeting from there. And he's like the only source of news. And it, it like it sounded like, oh man, things are going bad for Turbo Boy. And then you then you listen to the tape. Then you listen to the restraining order hearing, the whole thing, and you're like, oh shit. This chick admitted that she you know, send him fake pregnancy pictures and shit. Like, like this, this just, she got caught in a lie. Remember the phone thing? She said she didn't have her phone. And then she's, and then her lawyer's like, she just got a call from her school. It's like, what? What? <laughs> she's like, and then I got to tell my story. I got to tell the story, the truth. It went very well for me, even though I, she got the order. It went perfect. Like it couldn't have gone any better as far as PR goes. There was no doubts in anyone's mind about after what happened there. Nobody was, people saw through the bullshit after that. But uh, yeah. So anyway, thank you uh, for that dono. Um, yeah. So I don't know how he shows his face after that, but you know. Oh, we got Jen McCabe. Jen McCabe just sent $150 too. Thank you, Jen McCabe. And her turtle chat says, I gave up drinking for one day. It's all yours. Okay. Thank you, Jen McCabe. Remember when Jen McCabe sexted me? Remember that? People forget about that time. <clears throat> Jen McCabe on July 1st, when she was fearing, keep in mind, she's so scared of me 
Oh, he won't leave me alone. He's I'm fearing. Oh my God, my witness intimidation. And I, he doesn't want me to testify. And then she gets drunk and sends me nudes. She sent me John Como nudes. She sent me a, 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 like paint me as one of your French girl, John Como pictures. And I'm like, what? Who the fuck? What is going on here? And she's like, I'm like, is that Matt? <laughs> she's like, no, that's John Como. Okay. How? And then she sobered up in the morning and she blocked me, but she was so scared. All these people, they're so scared yet. They contact me all the time. I guess it's a butt dial. That's what they all say. It's all a butt dial. Whatever. All right. Um, so thank you for that one very much. Jen McCabe, another one here from Ben sends $5 says our land, our building. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Um, all right. Let's see. I got a couple cash apps here to read again. We, I am cash app dollar sign, uncle turtle boy. Uh, okay. We got here. Jim Ferris Bueller sends 10 bucks and says, sounds like daddy needs a good finger popping. Okay. Thank you. Um, next one from Emmy sends 10 bucks and says, I'm fired up. Let's fucking go free Karen Reed. Absolutely. Lisa Stewart sends 20 bucks and says, keep up the great work. Thank you, Lisa. I appreciate that. Emmy sends another 10 bucks says, if Grant goes loco, Get him full Wendy Murphy. I'll try. Uh, Dolly's Dance Academy sends 10 bucks and says, I wish I could do more jail time. Oh, no, she sent this the other day. Okay, cool. Cool. If anyone else wants to donate, cash app dollar sign Uncle Turtle Boy or click at the link at the top for Turtle Chat. All right, we got some shit to get through here, though. So there was like 5 million motions today that we need to read. Let's start from the top. Um, because they are trying to pull some shenanigans, folks. They are trying to pull some shenanigans. Uh, I'm going to start with the Commonwealth bullshit here. Okay. Motion uh, for appointment of a court stenographer. Ongoing order to impound all sites. Okay, we'll skip that one. Impoundment of jurors' names during trial. That's one they're going for. Why do you think they want to impound the jurors' names? Because who outed the chestnut juror? Remember that? The one woman on the Michael who voted, who hung the Michael Chestnut trial in what was that, July? Those, the juries, the jury lists are public. So I got the jury list and I went down the list and I found the juror who hung the jury. And I shamed them as I should because it's shameful to do that to Cindy Chestnut and Michael Chestnut's parents and Michael Chestnut's kids. It's shameful. So why wouldn't I do that? Now, they, you know, turtle see, turtle do, and they don't want that to happen again. So they're trying to impound the jurors' name. Now, I have no interest. I want to be very clear. I have no interest in influencing these jurors whatsoever. I don't need to. We don't need to. You know who's going to influence the jury? Alan Jackson, David Yanetti, Liza Little. They're going to influence the jury by presenting the facts. That's it. We don't need to do that. We just want to make our voices heard. That's it. All right. So there's that one. Another one says, uh, motion to dismiss ability of observers on remote platforms from being heard in the courtroom <laughs> and Commonwealth's request for notice regarding television cameras. So because Jim McDermott is such a boomer, he never figures out how to mute the Zoom. I've never seen anything like this. So it's like, why can't he just mute it? What is so hard about this? He doesn't know how to hit the mute button. And now they need a goddamn motion to make Jim McDermott hit the fucking mute button. Like, how is this real? So that's a motion they filed today. Another motion they filed. Um, sequest, sequ, uh, how do I pronounce this? Secretariat? No. Uh, sequestration order. And for relief from that order for family members of the victim. So what does that want to do? The Commonwealth moves for an order <coughs> to sequester all witnesses expected to testify at trial. So I assume that means that they're not allowed in the courtroom. 
And some people think that they might add me as a witness just to keep me out of the courtroom. That'd be interesting. If they do it, so be it. I mean, whatever. But they want to allow the victim's brother, who is somehow a witness, sister-in-law, Aaron O'Keefe, this niece and nephew to attend the trial after their testimony has concluded. That's going to be real interesting, the testimony from the kids. Uh, and I feel bad for those kids. But they, they, those kids have been, have been brainwashed. And their testimony, like these people love to hide behind kids. They love it. And they are going to get these kids to say bad things about Karen Reed. That's what they're going to do. Yeah, I mean, I want to get on the witness stand. Believe me, MLS. I want to get on the witness stand. I'd love to get on the witness stand. And honestly, I'm like, I don't know who's more likely to call me as the witness. I feel like the Commonwealth desperately wants to make, to tie me to, like, their whole thing, we'll get into it, with Karen Reed is, let's, like, it was going so badly for them. Around, like, August... Like things were looking real bad for them. And they're like, okay, I have a Hail Mary here. I got an idea. Let's jack up Turtle Boy on some shit. Let's get some witness intimidation charges going against him. And then we'll blame Karen Reed for it. We'll say Karen Reed was calling the shots. We'll get his phone. We'll get some judge to sign off a warrant to get his phone. We'll find out that he communicated with Karen Reed. And then maybe he'll go through a, a bad breakup with a lunatic and then she'll make up some shit about Karen Reed too. And then Karen Reed will have her phone taken because a judge will sign off on that. And that's what ended up happening. And like, and what they're trying to do is make it seem like, like don't pay attention to all the facts. Let's talk about this guy over here. He's charged with witness intimidation. He's a bad person because let's be honest. My prior to my arrest on October 11th, all you heard was good things about my coverage of this case. Like that's all you heard was like, Oh, turtle boy is getting the news that no one else is getting. And look at, he's doing this and he's interviewing people and things were going real good. And then they arrest me. And then what's that's the headline that comes out. And every time I'm mentioned in an article, which I am all the time now, what's the first thing they say? Oh, he's got, he's got 16 felony counts for this and that. He's arrested. He went to jail for 60 days. Nobody ever talks about, like, WCVB never mentions, oh, yeah, he was the first person to track down and interview the plow driver who specifically said there was no body on the front lawn at 2.30, which means Karen Reed couldn't have done it. Yeah, he did that. Or he discovered on September 25th that Gemma Cabe's car was parked outside of the Proctor household and she was inside the house proving that the district attorney lied, that there was no personal relationship between the Proctors and any of the witnesses in the case. I mean, that seemed like that, that would be the first thing I would mention that, Oh yeah, turtle boy, this is his involvement in the case, but no, they, they don't mention any of that shit because that makes me look legitimate. That makes, Oh shit. This guy's the real deal. You know, instead they post all that sh the witness intimidation. Oh, he's a bad guy. He's a, and he's just, he called Karen Reed 189 times. Okay. Okay. Anyway, so that's another motion there. So they're going to try to hide behind the kids a lot. And again, I feel sorry for the kids. Um, but Karen Reed, I'm sure has some shit too. And they're, and, and they're going to have to be very delicate with how they cross examine these kids. And I'm telling you right now, Karen Reed was much more involved in those children's lives than Peggy or Paul O'Keefe ever was. And that's just a fact. It's an undeniable fact that the defense will be able to prove that Karen Ree was a mother figure to John's niece. That she taught, like she would, she, there, I know shit. I've seen, believe me, a lot of shit's going to come out about this. This whole narrative that can't, they are, if, if, if they are going to try to, destroy Karen Reed's character. Karen Reed's got receipts too that she hasn't shown yet. Trust me. Trust me. She has plenty of receipts and you're going to see them at the trial. If they, if they want a character assassinate her, <laughs> wouldn't recommend it. Wouldn't recommend it.
And you're going to see just how brainwashed these kids are because, oh yeah, there's text messages. Yeah. She got text messages too. Yeah. And they say they paint a very different picture than the ones that the Commonwealth has painted about the relationship between those children and Karen Reed. You're going to see something very different at trial. Just wait for it. Again, I don't know anything about any text messages between the children and Karen Reed. I don't know anything about that. I don't know anything about family pictures and shit like that. And like, you know, major moments in their life that Karen Reed was a part of that Paul O'Keefe was MIA for. I don't know anything about that shit, but I heard it there. I think you're going to see it. I think you're going to see some of it. So if they want to go down that road, it ain't going to end well for them. It's the jury's going to see a very different side. And one day, I think those kids will know the truth when they're older. But anyway, yeah, Melanie's show is great. Very factual. All right. Um, and, and, and John's father is another one. I like that comment there. John's father and Karen used to go to church together and shit. John's father's like, you can tell he's not as into it as the rest of them. Like, John's father was somewhat close with Karen Reed. And you could tell that guy does not look as comfortable being there and is not as into it as the rest of them. He does not care. You could tell he does not carry the same hatred for Karen Reed that the rest of them do, that the rest of these douchebags do. Oh, I'm sure Karen's watching right now. Stay strong. Of course she's watching. And Jackson and United, they're all watching. They all watch this shit. Of course they do. You've been watching since day one. We haven't wavered at all, have we, folks? We have not wavered at all about Karen Reed's innocence. And we've our conviction has only grown stronger as time comes along. And I'll tell you one thing. we Our side says we ain't got no quit. Well, neither do they. They ain't got no quit either. They are fully committed. Like every, like they are, we underestimated their commitment to corruption. They are not, they are going to go down swinging. That's what they're doing here. They're like, they want to fuck. So it is time to fuck. Next week, we are going to get in that courtroom and we are going to fuck, fuck, fuck. And it is going to be glory. And, and, and only one person gets to come. Us. We get to come. Not them. We're going to fuck. And it's it's go time. It's fuck. This is the moment we've been waiting.
Is it fixed? Are we back? Are we back? StreamYard is having some issues. Hold on. I think we're back. All right. Anyway, uh, yeah, if you guys go, like, I, I, was, I heard StreamYard's having some issues. Like, I went on there today. And I'll show you. I go on Twitter whenever this happens. I just check out Twitter. People talk about it. And I guess StreamYard today uh, had some issues here where it's like StreamYard's having technical issues. Something's glitching out on StreamYard. So something was wrong with StreamYard today. So I don't know if that was related to it, but whatever. We're back. We're back. We're good. We're back in the house. I don't even remember what we were talking about. There's probably something good. Probably something juicy. Um, anyway. Let's uh, get back to the other motions here today that I'm reading. Let me read some other motions that the defense is having. I mean, the Commonwealth has. Um, all right. They want to allow in-court identification. I didn't know you had to. I know that was a thing. Uh, victims' photographs. Okay. Um, admit photographs of the victim's injuries as observed by medical providers on January 29th. Okay. Preclude reference to, to and redact the manner of death contained on the victim's death certificate. Why would they want to preclude that? I don't know. They want to admit the 911 call. Okay. They want to obtain quarry records of potential jurors. So no criminals. Okay. Um, they want to... Let's see. Regarding the use of leading questions. What's that? Let's see what that one is. Oh, okay. look at this. This is an interesting one. So they say here that a great leeway for leading questions is allowed with child witnesses. So they want to ask these kids leading questions. I guess they're not even hiding it. So there's that. What else we got here? Um, they want to admit evidence that the defendant was in custody for a period of time after her arrest. Okay. So let me read this to you. It says, The kids are 13 and 16, by the way. The Commonwealth moves to offer evidence that the defendant was in custody for a period of time. One night she spent in jail. As reasons, therefore, the Commonwealth would assert that during the course of the investigation, the defendant was placed under arrest and transported hold on, to the Massachusetts State Police Milton Barracks where she made certain unsolicited statements that were recorded on department issued body worn cameras. Nice to see that the state police suddenly have body cams. They didn't have body cams for the friends and family meeting with the McCabe's and the Alberts. They didn't have that, but they apparently had them when Karen Reed was spending the night at the Milton state police barracks, where by the way, those perverts, Bukaki and Proctor watched her get changed. Do you guys know that? They didn't even have a female cop that could do that. Those fucking degenerates. They got those guys are predators, man. Fucking predators. Oh yeah, I was talking about fucking, but you guys got the point there. It's time to fuck. It is like enough of this shit. And Josh Levy, he's ready to fuck. Um, the defendant was uh, in custody. It says here, and is inextricably intertwined with the description. Okay. All right. Whatever. So they want that. Who knows what she said there? They want, um, opening statements and notice of any visual aids. The defense intends to display to jury during an opening statement. Okay. Um, they want to admit an expert celebrate demonstration. They really want to, uh, oh, actually, let me bring this up. This is interesting. They're, they're right on mass courts. All these docs are on mass courts.
So the Commonwealth provides notice that intends to call digital forensic experts Jessica Hyde and Ian Whiffen as expert witnesses. Now, remember, both of these people, neither one of them said that the 227 search didn't happen. Neither one of them. They both say that the 624 search happened, which we all agreed happened. But they don't deny the 227. Neither of them does. The Commonwealth requests that Ian Wick Whiffen's expert testimony, the court allow him to conduct a courtroom demonstration on how da data was stored within Jennifer McCabe's cell phone. They are so upset. Like, they act like they're attorneys for Jennifer McCabe. Uh, okay, it's the leading Celebrate software. Jennifer McCabe provided her cell phone to law enforcement in the days following John O'Keefe's death. Celebrate software was used by the Commonwealth and the defendant's expert to interpret the digital data. His expert report uh, utilized his superior knowledge of Celebrate software to demonstrate how, where, and when Jennifer McCabe's Google searches were stored within the digital databases. <laughs> if this is their plan to bring their nerd up, like, so the defense is going to bring their nerd up and explain that this happened. And then they're going to bring their nerd up and he's going to be like, well, I don't really know if it happened or not, but here's the whole thing about WALs and all this other shit. The jury is going to be sitting there and being like, what? They're going to be confused. You're going to loudly explain it to them. And then they're just going to be like, you know what? I don't even fucking know if it happened or not. Like that's, that's the best case scenario for the Commonwealth is the jury's just like, I don't even know what you bitches are talking about. I don't know what you people are talking about. I don't even know who's telling the I don't even know what's, I don't even know what happened. And that's reasonable doubt. They're, it might have happened. They're definitely not going to walk away from there. But like, oh, no fucking way you should Google that. That, that That's not going to happen. The best they can hope for is the jury's just like, I don't know if it happened. And if they say, I don't know if it happened, they're not going to convict Karen Reed, period. Period. So, um, it is, let me see, what does they want to do here? It is within the sound direct discretion of the trial judge to permit a courtroom experiment, demonstration, or reenactment. Oh, let's do it. Let's do a reenactment. Okay. <coughs> they intend to have Mr. Whiffen use the highly disputed extraction report. <coughs> highly disputed. Excuse me. <coughs> highly disputed extraction report from Jennifer McCabe's cell phone to demonstrate with Celebrate software how, where, and when the digital data of the Google searches were stored. This demonstration would closely mirror the actual Google searches conducted by Jennifer McCabe on January 29th, 2022, and would aid the jury in understanding how Mr. Whiffen is able to opine that the contested searches occurred at approximately 624, and not he never says it didn't happen at 227. Lay witness testimony that a black article of clothing could appear light colored when viewed at night using the type of surveillance system at issue was appropriate given the judge's understandable. Cons okay, blah, 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 blah. The defendant does not dispute the reliability of the Celebrate software, and her own expert has relied on Celebrate to draw their conclusion. Alternatively, the Commonwealth would move to admit a video recording of the demonstration to accompany his testimony. Okay. Whatever. I'm not afraid of any of this. I'm ready. Like, let's fuck. Let's go. Let's do the, let's do the Ian Whiffen thing. Let's go. Time to fuck. What else do we have here? Um, they want to admit her out of court statements for purposes of medical treatment and certified medical records from Good Samaritan Hospital. So whatever she said there, they want to admit the defendants out of court statements as statements of a party opponent. I assume they're talking about like the 2020 interview and shit like that. Uh, another one, they want to admit recorded statements from the defendant made to the media. No problem. Evidence of motive and nature of a, the relationship. Motive. Let me, let me pull this up. So, um, I always skip the case law stuff. Four weeks prior to the murder, um, let's see. Commonwealth seeks to introduce testimony 
from witnesses who observed the defendant and the victim's volatile and hostile relationship as it existed at the time of the victim's death. Four weeks prior to the murder, the defendant became enraged at the victim for speaking to a female friend who was on their group vacation in Aruba and accused the victim of having an affair. This incident was observed by numerous individuals who will testify to their personal observations. This incident in Aruba seems to also be the turning point in the relationship as the defendant told Mr. Brian Higgins in a series of text messages shortly thereafter that a relationship with the victim was a, quote, very fucked up situation and details that she observed the victim all over a friend's sister in the lobby of our hotel and accused the victim of having hooked up with another girl in Aruba. Voicemails left on January 29th, the defendant also screams for the victim for apparently fucking another girl. Again, we've been over this. If Karen Reed actually killed John O'Keefe, the last thing she would do is leave a bunch of incriminating voicemails accusing him of fucking another chick. Secondly, as somebody who was just unfortunately in a, uh, a relationship where it was always like, you fucking other whores, you fucking other whores. Sometimes bitches say shit like that. I've heard like sometimes bitches say shit like that. It, and every guy out there knows it. Every guy out there knows it. Sometimes bitches be getting mad and it, that that's their go-to is like, you're fucking other. Ho-. Maybe, maybe they don't say it like that. But it, every guy out there knows what I'm talking about. Where it's like, I'm not, I like, no, I, I if I'm going to get blamed for it, at least let me do it. I didn't even fuck any other horse. What are you talking about? Yeah, exactly. Sometimes you bitches be getting crazy. <laughs> you do. And so it's just like, I'm reading this shit. They're trying to make Karen Reed smell like, oh, this horrible person. I'm like, oh, I've heard that script before. Oh, the old, you're fucking other. Yeah, okay. You know, it is what it is. Exactly, Tom. Bitches be tripping. Like, that's that's just what we got a case of here with Karen Reed here. Bitches be tripping. It doesn't mean she killed the motherfucker. It's just bitches be tripping, Your Honor. <laughs> like, I, I could be an expert witness on that. Like, I could be an expert witness on crazy bitches. And just bring me up. To, Your Honor, I just, you have no, I just went to jail for 60 days over some bullshit. Because bitches be tripping. You know what I mean? Like, I know. So in your expert opinion, Mr. Carney, Mr. Turtle Boy, doctor, Dr. Turtle Boy, daddy, what, what should I call you? Okay. In your expert opinion is, do these messages from Karen Reed indicate that she is, in fact, a murderer? Uh, no. What we have here is a standard case of bitches be tripping. That's what we have here. Bitches be tripping. <laughs> And that's all this is. This is bitches be tripping. It's just like, okay, you know, John got a little sloppy, you know, hitting the sauce. There was one part in there where he wanted to watch the game. She got mad at him because he wanted to watch the game. Been there before. Been there before. You know, it doesn't make her a killer. It's just sometimes bitches be tripping. That's it. That's it. It's like, come on. Every guy and woman out there knows that too. Cause it's, I know it's, and, and this is what bitches be saying is cause men make us crazy. This is what they say. And that's always their, you made me, you made, you're the reason bitches be tripping. You're the reason. And then we can't, you know, we'll just have to agree to disagree on that. But it's just, this is a tale as old as time. Bitches be tripping. Anyway. Yeah. Possessive, not homicidal. Exactly. Exactly. Like, and this is the best, they're going to really focus on the stupid Aruba trip and the Commonwealth filed a motion to ban the Aruba shit because this is all they got. They don't have forensic evidence. The, the autopsy photos make no sense. Lucky Locker makes no sense. Ryan Nagel makes no sense. And they're going to be like, you know what? Let's talk about bitches be tripping in Aruba. That's all that that's going to be your honor. Bitches be tripping. That's going to be their whole thing. This bitch is crazy crazy anyway what else do they want to say in here they said that um following the public incident the evidence will also demonstrate animosity toward them prior to the victim's death the victim's nephew niece will testify that they heard the victim communicate his intentions to end the relationship with the defendant 
So riddle me this. They're always saying that like, oh, why would the, you want us to believe in this conspiracy? The, why would they throw him out in the front lawn, turtle fucker? What, what are they going to chop up his body? Of course they're going to throw him out in the front lawn. And here, but they never answer this one. If Karen, they're acting like this is like premeditated. Oh, Karen Reed wanted to uh, really hate this guy. You know, he's sticking his dick everywhere and going up to random chicks named Etta and fucking copping a feel and making out with him. And she's like, oh, I'm going to kill this motherfucker. But you know when I'm going to kill him? You know when I'm going to kill him? When I drop him off in front of a cop's house. That's when I'm going to kill him. That's even, like, the, How does that make any fucking sense? The Karen Reed's like, you know what? I'm going to fucking kill this motherfucker right here. Sure. They can't, there's ring cameras everywhere. There's going to be fucking blood on my car. I'm going to have a dent. He's probably going to survive and tell the world what I fucking did. Cause how the fuck am I going to kill someone going in reverse? And she's just like, yeah, I'm going to do that. And then no one will ever catch me. They never talk about that. They always talk about like, well, how could the people in the house, oh, you conspiracy nut jobs. Why would Jen McCabe throw her life away? Why would Karen Reed throw her life away? What the fuck? <laughs> Why would Michael Proctor give up his prestigious career in the Massachusetts State Police? Because he's corrupt. That's it. He didn't think because he, he didn't think he got caught. <laughs> That's it. He didn't think he got caught. He never pictured a federal investigation into this shit. Because he's the fucking police. Who's gonna stop him? Turns out there is a higher authority. Turns out there is a higher authority. All right. Um, anyway, back to this. Do we have anything else here? In a domestic violence homicide, that domestic violence, evidence such as prior disputes are relevant to show the volatile nature of the relation. Dude, if I ended up dead, let me tell you, if I if you guys found me dead on Christmas, like, and if I just like killed myself or like OD'd on something. Uh, the fake victim would be in jail. Like they, they go through your phone. It's a, it, it, that doesn't make her a killer. Like just because you said some crazy shit doesn't make you a killer. Period. Volatile nature of the relationship and the victim in the weeks preceding the murder and explain the defendant's limit. Blah 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 blah. Okay. Um. Okay. Con case law evidence of the defendant's prior conduct is permissible. All right. So they they really want to. This is all they got is the Aruba trip. And they're going to trot the kids out there because the evidence is all against them. So they really want to get this shit in there. What else? Um, to exclude character reputation evidence of the defendant. What's that? Let's see this. Why would they want to exclude that? Okay. Um, is it like good? Okay. When a defendant may introduce evidence of a good reputation, however, that evidence is limited to the character trait, which is involved in the commission of the crime charged. If the defendant opens the door to her good character, the Commonwealth may present evidence not only through cross-examination, uh, but about her bad character, which they were going to do anyway. So they're trying to stop evidence that shows that Karen Reed's actually not a monster, which means I'm telling you, there's text messages. I, there might be text messages. I don't know anything about any text messages between the kids and Karen Reed on Karen Reed's birthday. There might be text messages like that saying, you know, what a great motherly figure she is and, you know, I love you and shit like that. There might be some shit like that. But I don't know anything about that. I don't know anything about that. And they don't want the jury seeing that. That's what that motion tells me right there. They don't want that shit coming out, period. Um, what else? Um, reference to any alleged bad character and any prior misconduct of the victim or any witness. All right. Uh, to prohibit defense experts from testifying regarding scientific studies or anecdotal experiences and request a voir dire of any proposed defense experts. 
Are you fucking kidding me? They're like, don't use science experts. Look at this shit. They said this with a straight face. Look at the name of this motion. A, a motion to prohibit defense experts from testifying regarding scientific studies. They don't want them to talk about scientific studies. <laughs> okay. Okay. But again, they have nothing to hide. They really don't want you to hear, hear about science. They, they don't like science. What else here we have? Um, oh, I thought this one was interesting. I I got a shout out. I'm officially. So again, I don't know why they want to make this all about me, but this was interesting. So as you may have seen, I did a story on this today. The defense wants to ban, prohibit them bringing up my witness intimidation charges because they are attempting to, you know, suggest that Karen Reed, the dastardly Karen Reed was responsible for those because she was pulling the strings on me. It's nonsense, of course. It's not, she's not being charged with witness intimidation. So why are you even bringing this up? But I was surprised to see this one from the Commonwealth. It says, again, by the way, like I made it, mom. Hello. Like I got my own motion at a murder trial. <laughs> like they're both talking about, both sides are talking about me for some reason. I don't know what, whatever. Okay. Carney, AKA turtle boy and his pending criminal charges for witness intimidation. The Commonwealth moves to exclude any reference to Mr. Aiden Carney, his blog postings, his protests in support of the defendant and his pending criminal charges for intimidation of witnesses associated with this case. Now, why would they do that? And then I'm like, wait a minute, why are they trying to protect me? And that, then, it, then it hit me. They don't want them mentioning the blog from the article from September 25th about Jen McCabe's car being parked outside of the Proctor household. Because if they ban, I'm the only one that wrote about that. WCVB didn't find that newsworthy that, oh yeah, the DA lied about the lack of personal relationship there. And they don't want, if they ban, if they ban Are we back? Are we back? Oh shit. I don't, it, that's going to keep out. This is not a Wi Fi issue. It's not a computer issue. It's a StreamYard thing. It's happening everywhere. So before we do that, let me read a couple uh, turtle chats. I don't want to miss anyone's turtle chat if they got them. If we haven't, yeah, I got a couple turtle chats here. We got one from Sandy, sends 10 bucks and says, Dr. T, get the banner plane to fly over court. Over 200 feet. California has your back. Cali, Sandy, RN. Thank you very much, Sandy. Again, I don't control the planes, uh, but if people want to do that, that's cool. Angie sends 10 bucks and goes, can't do more right now. I'm mostly donating to the Karen Reese Defense Fund. Will you have an answer this week as to whether you can attend the trial or not? In case you haven't been told yet, 
your dedication, passion, truths, receipts, and opinions and humor are much appreciated. I remember the first time I saw you thinking, what the actual fuck? How is this guy so confident and outspoken? I wish I could be like you to fight for what's right. You need to be cloned. We are committed. Let's fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Angie. That's very thoughtful. Um, I don't know if I'm, I hope I get to attend the trial. Uh, that depends on some things. So um, obviously uh, I'd like to go to the hearings, but I'm not going to get evicted again. There's a, there's an individual out there. We know who they are uh, who has a restraining order on me because she lied about a domestic violence incident. And those charges have since been dropped. And since then uh, she never showed up to any cases before, uh, but she showed up when I, as soon as I got out of jail, she started showing up when I announced I was going to be there. When I announced I wouldn't be there, she didn't show up. And so she's also called me several times. And so we filed a motion to have the order amended or um, vacated. And we have pretty good grounds for it. Now, we got Judge Pomerol for that, the same guy who elected not to... Uh, you know, revoke my bail on March 14th. Much better than McCollum, I thought. A, a real judge. Like a fair judge, I thought. And so he will ultimately be the judge deciding this. Now, uh, this upset the fake victim who I, at this point, I'm, I'm not, con I, I don't even know if they're paying, or, like, I don't know what's going on, but she's a very valuable weapon for them to keep me away from the court. And they know that. And so this prompted her to write like a eight, page insane response which was posted yesterday on the justice page you can go ahead and read it on there by someone um again i'm not gonna waste time on it you can read it if you want to but it's it's just madness this thing like it's crazy it it accuses me of being a vexatious litigant and accuses me of using the order to harass her because we're trying to get this amended. Again, I just want to attend the trial. I would like to have it vacated outright because there's no reason for it, but I just want to go to the trial because that's my job. Like, this is what I do. I cover major news stories and particularly the Karen Reed case. So I just want to go there. And uh, it, became, it became very clear in her eight-page manifesto that they are very committed to making sure I don't go. So we have a hearing for that on April 26th. And we will see if that's amended by that. Until then, I can't attend because I'm not going to go there and get evicted. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to waste my time doing that, okay? Um, but the other way they can ultimately try to get me to not go is make me a witness. Because witnesses can't go to the whole trial. You only get to testify and then you got to leave. So, no, it, I don't think it was written by Krusty, man. I think you guys underestimate her. Uh, I know I, if you read the 10 page restraining order application, it's very similar to that. Very similar. And they, they work together, obviously, but you know, um, I, you know, people say I'm better off streaming and that's actually one of the arguments that she makes in there is that, oh, he makes more money streaming. Um, don't care about money. I want to be in the courtroom because that's where reporters are. And that's where I've always been. That's my domain in the courtroom. I want to be there, but hopefully, uh, this gets amended because you know, is what it is. Again, I'm walking away and leaving if it happens, period. Anyway, let's, uh, I also have here. Um, so thank you, Angie, for that. Dave sends 10 bucks as happy Wednesday. I'm a bit worried about all the things that may not be allowed into evidence. She's clearly not fearing the feds. Auntie Bev also fuck Jen McCabe and her cunty dismissive laugh. Whenever so someone confronts her about Karen Reed, here's hoping she has nothing to laugh about in the foreseeable future. Fuck her and fuck all the McAlbert toadies. Stay strong. Okay. Thank you very much. So I appreciate that Dave. Um, and I'm a bit worried about it too, but uh, we'll see. We're going to get to that. We're going to get to some of that shit soon. What else do we have here? 
Uh, five bucks from Danny says I work in cybersecurity and hold a master's degree in digital forensics. And even I'm confused on how this is being handled. Why isn't a Celebrate expert being allowed to testify? They are. If they were made to, they are. So they, they are. Um, so thank you for that. Alex sends 10 bucks says, do you think the Commonwealth's closing arguments at the Karen retrial in hopes of convincing her for a murder too is going to be the fact that you had a bullhorn <laughs> or that you went to a lacrosse game? It might. It might. They really don't like the bullhorn, folks. Hey, these people are just real. Uh, he had a bullhorn. Amplify the sound. He's a bad guy. He's a killer. Put him in jail. Put him in jail. Get a bullhorn. Anyway, back to this motion here. If anyone else wants to donate, click at the link at the top for Turtle Chat or cash at me at dollar sign Uncle Turtle Boy. I don't think we have any more cash apps, do we? No. Okay, cool. Um, all right. So they don't want any reference to me. Okay. And Lally's so cunty about this too. As grounds, Mr. Carney is an extremely vocal observer of the case. He is not a witness to the facts and is only peripherally related due to his criminal conduct. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. I'm not peripherally related due to my criminal conduct in harassing and intimidating witnesses. I'm peripherally related because I am exposing corruption and I am doing actual investigative journalism in this case. I'm recreating the Commonwealth lies and debunking them one by one. I'm recreating Karen Reed going in reverse, trying to hit 24 miles an hour and 62 feet. Can't do it. Can't do it. And they abandoned that shortly after that. This is why he wants me banned. And they're hiding. They're using, see what they're saying? They're using the witness intimidation to just try to be like, this guy, don't listen to anything he says. He's, he's a witness intimidator. He intimidates the witnesses. It's a bad guy. Uh, the Commonwealth, let's see, reference to Mr. Carney, his blog postings or the pending criminal charges he faces have no rational tendency to prove any material issue in the case. They kind of do though. They kind of do. They, the Lizzie Proctor thing, Jen McCabe's September 25th visit, they certainly do. Lunchbox. The Commonwealth also instructs its witnesses not to discuss the relentless harassment they've endured and not to discuss the pending criminal charges against Mr. Carney. Oh, okay. That will be handled by a special prosecutor. Oh, he's very special. Okay. All right. <coughs> what else we got? Um, oh, this one. How about this fucking, these fuckers? Look at this one. Can you believe this one? Where do you see this one? Motion to prohibit reference to any federal investigations conducted by the U.S. Attorney's Office and or FBI. Can you believe that? I'll be right back. I'm going to take a leap. Hold on. All right, we're back. We're back. Sorry about that. Uh, anyway, I need a drink there too. All right. So 
can you believe this? They don't want the, us talking about the FBI. The Commonwealth wants to prohibit disclosure of any investigations done by the U.S. Attorney's Office. In November, the U.S. Attorney's Office impaneled a federal grand jury to investigate unspecified federal crimes, and as a result, extensively invest investigated the facts and circumstances that led to John O'Keefe's death. They have publicly confirmed that at no time has the U.S. Attorney's Office named any person or entity a target, and no witnesses nor the DA's office has received notice that they are the target. On February 21st, they produced the com to the Commonwealth and the defendant a substantial number of confidential documents. On March 8th and 19th, the U.S. Attorney's Office confirmed to the Commonwealth and defense that all information relevant and material to the pending Norfolk Superior Court criminal proceedings had been produced. On March 19th, the defense indicated it was satisfied with the U.S. Attorney's representation. It received all relevant material information in sum. The federal documents are consistent with the Commonwealth's theory of the case and debunk the out. And some of the federal documents are consistent with the Commonwealth's theory of the case and debunk the defendant's allegations of a cover-up. So basically what they're saying here is that they, your honor, trust us that all the 3,100 pages of federal documents, just now, nothing's in there. And not only is nothing in there, but they shouldn't even be able to talk about it. Like, can you believe this? Can you believe the balls of these people that you can't mention the fact that the, this unprecedented FBI investigation of this very case occurred and 3,100 pages of documents came out and, and, and the defense can't talk about it. it. They just can't mention it because trust us, bro. There's nothing to see in there. Trust us, bro. Can you believe the balls on these people? They ain't got no quit. Throughout the course of the investigation, the defense communicated with the U.S. Attorney's Office and provided material and records that advanced the defendant's theory of the case. This unusual collaboration resulted in discovery that far exceeds the bounds permitted. Like, they are so mad. They're like, oh, they're really trying to push this whole, the U.S. Attorney's Office cooperated with the defense. Yeah, motherfucker. Because they're the ones furnishing evidence of your corruption. Dimbat. Like, what the fuck? Like, the whole point is not the cover-up. The point is that someone else killed John O'Keefe. That's it. I mean, it's just insane. It's insane. Like, can you believe the balls on these people? The Polish don't like this. Imagine she says that. Imagine she grants this order. Again, I get I get why people are worried about this because it's Auntie Bev. She will be showing if Auntie Bev does some shit like this, then she she better watch out too for the feds. I'm telling you right now. If she does not allow, like, phew, they are not going to like that. Revealing the mere existence of a federal grand jury, particularly one that has no target, no resulting criminal charges, yet nor any factual evidence that would considerably undermine the Commonwealth's case, except we already know that several things in there undermine the Commonwealth's case. Y'all lied about Proctor and his relationship about with the Alberts. That's been proven already. We know that. We know that the feds, a Quantico-trained expert with three PhDs, said that John John's injuries were inconsistent with being hit by a car, which means he wasn't hit by a car. Yeah. Yeah. That, that seems somewhat relevant to the fact that a, a woman is on trial and her life is on the line because she allegedly ran someone over with a car. It's irrelevant, says Adam Lally. Okay. It would confuse the jury. They would confuse the jury. Oh, my God. No, it, oh, my God. It would result in a trial within a trial. Yeah, maybe you shouldn't be going forward with this then with much of the federal materials being inadmissible, confidential, or offered without a proper foundation. Should this court be allowed to, inclined to allow either party to impeach a witness's testimony with prior federal testimony, 
or reference federal materials to attempt to show bias, reference should only be made to prior testimony subject to a limiting instruction to not consider the nature of any prior testimony. What? The proceedings would be unfairly prejudiced if the defendant is permitted to rely upon the mere appearance and existence of a federal investigation, especially where the investigation was shaped and influenced by the feds. I hate how they say this. Oh, it's shaped and influenced by the defense as if the fucking feds are just manipulated by Karen, the dastardly Karen Reed and her attorneys. Oh, actually, they, they 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 tricked the FBI into thinking that something's going on here. They tricked them. Oh my God, this is so pathetic. They are so mad that they were they 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 found out about this federal investigation on Turtle Boy. They are so mad about that. When they read those text messages that I sent November twenty eighth, they shit their pants and they're like, "Shit, we should just not allow the feds to uh, none of this to come out in court." Like, oh, shit, they're investigating us. Oh shit, that was real. That was real. Oh fuck, that shit was real. Yeah. I mean, just, and to say that they, they don't, that a party's, if you allow them to impeach a witness's testimony with prior federal testimony, AKA, if they said something to the federal grand jury that is not the same thing that they told the state grand jury, we don't want to hear about that because we don't want our witnesses to be known as liars. Okay. Also here, give me one second to bring them up. Search. Superior Court, Norfolk, Reed, Karen. All right. Murder. All right, it's taking a minute to come up here. What, there's a couple other good motions here. They're not coming up. <laughs> Do you guys lose me? Am I still on? I'm still on, right? Hold on. Mass Quartz is being screwy. I just got booted from mass courts. And I could see I'm on. I appreciate that. I'm just having trouble with mass courts. While mass courts is loading. Oh, I think we just got on. Okay, we're good. All right. Uh, any other motions filed by them? They're stupid. All right. They want to prohibit reference to any pending internal affairs investigations oh my fucking god i didn't even see this one till right now did you guys see this can you imagine the balls on these people i mean look at this any reference to pending internal affairs investigations they don't want you to be able to mention that michael proctor the most important witness for the commonwealth the lead investigator is under internal affairs investigation. Can't talk about that. They're confidential. They've not resulted in any sustained finding of misconduct. Prohibit any reference to any civil lawsuits filed against can police Sergeant Lank that relate to an incident 20 years ago. You can't mention that Lank is kind of like a corrupt cop. Who lies? Unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So they don't want you to mention any of that shit. What else do they not want to mention here? Um, oh, this is the worst one. Which I, you, there's no image for this one. Motion to preclude the defendant from raising a third party culpability defense. Can you like, that's the entire case. They don't want Karen Reed to be able to say somebody else did this. 
which they clearly did. Well, if somebody else didn't do it, then she did it, right? That's what they're saying. Like, I, I, I have not been able to read this, but that's evil. That's evil. That's the only one that's not available, as Tina said. The only one. Imagine she approves this. Imagine she does. <laughs> Again, I, I would assume that they're not, but how is that even legal? You have a right in Massachusetts to a third party culpability defense. I'm bringing it. Um, I'll bring it up here. So this says here, uh, I don't know, pro probably pretty soon. I would guess tomorrow. They got to get the show on the road. <clears throat> <clears throat> Evidence that a third party committed the crimes charged against the defendant or had motive, intent, and opportunity to commit the crimes is admissible, providing provided that the Evidence has substantive, uh, substantive, substantial probative value. The courts must take a preliminary finding that the evidence is relevant, not too remote or speculative. I mean, again, is relevant? Yeah, a body was found on Brian Albert's front lawn and it looks like he got beat up. That's, and there's Apple Health data showing John going up and down stairs and there's no stairs in Karen Reed's car. And, oh, no, he's going up and down a hill. That's not how it works. Stupid. <laughs> it's not too remote and will not tend to prejudice or confuse the jury. If the evidence is otherwise inadmissible, the court must also find there, there are substantial connecting links between the crime charged. If it's otherwise inadmissible, the court must also find there are substantial connecting links between the crime charged <laughs> and a third party or between the crime, whatever. Okay. So it seems like it should be admissible. There's absolutely no reason for them not to allow this. I mean, this is insane what they're trying to do to this woman. Insane. They're out in the open doing it. Um, another motion, if the defendant intends to cross-examine any witness about alleged bias and request for a pretrial ruling on whether the proposed evidence demonstrates a plausible showing of alleged bias. Let's see this gem. Let's see what this you're trying to keep out here. I mean, I, can you believe the third party defense? Did it? They want to know whether the defendant intends to cross examine any witness for bias and or prejudice and what the defendant's pl plausible showing of alleged bias may be. Like Michael Proctor seems kind of biased, a little bit biased, and they want to know, why do you think that? So, what do they say about this case? Um, the court has legitimate interest in excluding reference to any matter that is without support in evidence and during cross-examination, it is error for counsel to communicate impressions by innuendo through questions which are answered in the... Okay, whatever. They don't want Michael Proctor to be asked about his bias, basically. What else they got here? A voir dire of potential jurors and proposed jury questionnaires. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. I also got sent this, um, you know, um, 135 page document. Let me see if I can send this to myself on Facebook. Does this work? No, nah, it doesn't work when I do that. How do I get the Ted Daniel thing? Did he post it on Twitter? Let me go to the Twitter machine. 
see if we can pull this thing up. Um, okay. Who am I looking for? Ted Daniel. There we go. He doesn't have anything on there. Somebody said Ted Daniels dropped something, but I don't see anything. How how can I get this? Hold on. He just emailed it to me. That does help a lot. Give me one sec to pull this up. What email did you send it to there? I don't see it on my email. Let me read a turtle chat here. Anonymous sends five bucks and says, Your Honor, we'd like to call Twitter expert Jules to the stand, please. I mean, they're not that far off from doing something like that. They're not that far off. Okay, I got it here. Okay, hold on. Wow, this is long, long as shit. So I got, this is from Ted Daniel, I guess. Good old Ted. He's also in on the conspiracy, I guess. They want us to believe he's also a bad guy. Because, you know. Um, so, <clears throat> this is part of, so they ruled in the Globe's favor that the Globe gets to, like, unearth the defense's motion to dismiss, I believe. To Unimpound them. So she allowed that. And this is the defendant's motion to dismiss indictment. So we finally get to see the motion to dismiss. Again, I'm going to need some time. I don't know why that part's highlighted. Uh, what is all this? Over the course of the 14 days, the Commonwealth presented 41 witnesses to the grand jury. So they list all these witnesses who came in front of the grand jury. Okay. All these people, blah, blah, blah. All right. Um, not a single witness testified. They observed Miss Reed strike O'Keefe with her vehicle. Okay. So this is all the motion dismissed that we haven't seen yet, huh? So I'm seeing this for the first time now. It is pretty crazy that this was like not like made public that this was impounded. Like, why can't we see the motion to dismiss? That seems kind of, seems like a big deal, the motion to dismiss. Or at least it should. Oh, it was in public. Oh, okay. Hopefully no one's name is on this then, but whatever. Okay. Um, so, I, oh, I guess I have this before everyone else. Okay, cool. All right, all these texts that uh, Matt McCabe testified that he observed tire tracks in a V shape consistent with the three point turn. Remember that? Yeah, the vehicle sat outside for 15 minutes. Yeah, sure it did. Sure it did. Nagel testified that, oh, Nagel said he arrived at 12.15, the same time that Reed and O'Keefe got there. Um, according to Nagel, they got they got there, picked up Julie. As they drove down Dedham towards Cedar Crest, he observed a dark SUV come from the other direction, blah, blah, blah. Karen turns first. That the dark SUV was parked in front of their vehicle facing the same direction. He texted his sister to let her know she was there. Julie Nagel, they came out to greet him, said they were going to stay a while longer, spend the night. He tried to get convince her to get in the car, 
but he noticed that the dark SUV pulled up a car's length or two to the right side of the road. This is about 20 to 25 feet ahead. He noticed the SUV pull forward in another car length and two of them got up. Mr. Nagel testified he did not see a passenger inside the vehicle or anywhere in the surrounding area of the vehicle. He further testified he did not observe any damage to the vehicle and its car's taillights were intact. So how the fuck did John, like, John was not in the car. John was not outside the car. So is this before or after she allegedly hit him? Regrian Nagel's testimony is fucking undeniable proof of Karen Reed's innocence. Which, unfortunately for him, implicates his sister in a murder. At least six individuals cl claim to have the Albert residence in the early, not one person saw the whatever, okay. Okay, Higgins testified that he went to complete administrative work at the Canton Police Department at 1.30. And Colin Albert returned to his parents' home at approximately 12.30. None of these individuals testified that they saw a body on the front lawn. Phone records admitted to the grand jury from the night in question established that Miss Reed, okay, blah, blah, blah. Okay, we've heard all this. Okay. So this is all the motion to dismiss. Again, it's 135 pages. Page 11 highlight. <coughs> this is page 11. Oh, that's page nine. Page 11 is down here. Oh, this is interesting. Remember. When Karen was allegedly going around saying, is he dead? Is he dead? Is he dead? Not one of the officers, Seraph, Mullaney, or Good, ever attributed any incriminating statements or admissions to her as Sergeant Lank falsely recounted to the grand jury. Oh, so Lank lied to the grand jury. Lank wasn't even there at the beginning. And he's saying that, oh, yeah, th these guys told me that she was saying that. No, nope. nope. Didn't happen. <laughs> Didn't happen. According to Good's report, she was hysterical and was yelling, is he dead? Oh. When he asked her how she got there, how O'Keefe got there, she said, I don't know. Interesting. But Lank told the grand jury that the only information the responding officers were able to obtain from Miss Reed was an admission that she couldn't remember. That she had been to 34 Fairview Road, which was false, incomplete, and deceptive. Oh, this motherfucker. This motherfucker. Oh, wow. So I'm going to have to read this shit all over. This is wild. Wow. Interesting. Talk about the La Palada brothers in there. They really don't want you talking about that. So Chris Albert, admitted that he is a lifetime childhood friend of Chris Albert. Lank did. Interesting. Yeah, Lank testified like he's like this completely independent, neutral guy that just happens to be good friends with Chris Albert since the beginning of time. Uh, the Commonwealth never elicited any testimony from Detective Sergeant Lank informing the grand jury that the Canton Police Department conflict was conflicted off of this case. In spite of the Commonwealth's admitted knowledge of this fact, the prosecution never disclosed to the grand jury that the reason CPD lost jurisdiction was because the agency was conflicted. They never mentioned that to the grand jury, huh? All right. Um, how about this? 
In spite of Detective Sergeant Lang's clear conflict in this case, he personally took it upon himself to conduct the initial interviews of homeowners Brian and Nicole Albert. One of the members of the grand jury, perplexed by Brian and Nicole Albert's decision to hide inside their residence that morning, specifically asked, did the owners or occupants, occupants ever appear on the scene and interact with any of the officers? Mullaney responded that only Sergeant Link and Sergeant Good entered the residence to speak with them. The juror again asked, but they never came out to interact while you were there? To which Officer Mullaney replied, not that I recall, no. Another member of the grand jury at the close of Sergeant Link's testimony asked, so how close to the house to where the body was laying and with the fire department coming down and the lights going on, no one from the house heard the noise? It came out to say, what's going on? Oh, I love when grand jurors get a little fucking spicy like that. They did that in my case too, and they still indicted. I love it when they ask spicy questions like that, because that's what the, that's what a real jury is going to be like. What? Motherfucker didn't come out of the house. Again, easy to indict, not easy to convict. Interesting. I did not know that. Because grand jury testimony is sealed and it can only come out in motions. And this motion, for some reason, was impounded. Why was this impounded? Um, again, he got called back at 9 o'clock by Jennifer McCabe because she suddenly remembered more information. Right. And Karen said, oh, she suddenly remembered that Karen said, I hope I didn't hit him. <clears throat> All right. Even though the Cannes Police Department was no longer really involved in the case. Okay, they talk about Proctor's whole second family thing. Okay, formal introductions. Okay, she hits the car. All right. Anyway, I'm going to I'm going to have to read all this over. I don't have time for this shit right now. But uh I got to read all this shit over cuz it's spicy shit. No. Page 24 is good, I'm told, about Chris Albert. Let me get to page 24. <laughs> During the course of grand jury proceedings, the Commonwealth allowed Chris Albert to testify that he left the waterfall, walked home, <coughs> and never went to his brother's house. His wife, Julie, also denied going to her brother-in-law's house after the waterfall and testified that she went home to go to sleep. However, according to Bukaki's interview of the Alberts on February 10th, they both indicated they were present at the Waterfall Bar and Grill and then followed to Brian Albert's home. Oh, interesting. So they were there. Were they? I don't know. Interesting. Okay. So they tried to cover that shit up, huh? All right. You know, um, so I got a lot of reading to do here. I'm not going to be able to do it all tonight. Um, so why don't I, uh, in the meantime, let me read a couple turtle chats here. I think we got some turtle chats. Uh, okay, got a couple cash apps actually. Um, where to go? Okay. Suzanne sends 20 bucks and says, never lose the passion for what you do. Well, thank you very much, Suzanne. I appreciate that. I never will. Jeffrey sends 10 bucks, says, do they want them destroying the phone allowed in? I mean, that's from the federal investigation about destroying the phones. 
So no, they don't want the Commonwealth doesn't want that in. Uh, Kerry Watson sends fifty dollars and says, "Thank you, Ryan Joseph, for the magnet." Unk needs to be in court. Yes, he does. You're goddamn right. And thank you very much, Kerry Watson, for your generous donation. Okay. Um, so my voice is getting worse. So I'm going to take a break right now <coughs> and uh, take any questions uh, from you fine people. I got to read this whole fucking thing later on. I got some reading to do. I got a debate grant tomorrow. Mary fuck kill. Jen McCabe, Lizzie Proctor, and Kerry Roberts. Hmm. Definitely kill Jen McCabe. Not really. Not really. Uh, Mary. Oh, God. Oh, God. It means you're stuck with them, huh? Probably Kerry Roberts just because you can get her to do anything. Like, she'd be a pushover, and you could lie to her and shit like that. And she would just kind of take it lying down, wouldn't question anything. So, yeah, she'd be, I would marry Carrie Roberts. I guess bang Lizzie Proctor because she's the best looking of the three of them. But that's not a compliment at all. I'm just, the other two, obviously, no, 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 no. And you got to kill Jemma Cape, period. That's just a no-brainer. I don't know. It just was sent to me in my inbox, uh, Tom. Yeah, I saw Levy's uh, spicy letter to Bev today, kind of telling her you shouldn't. I got to read more on that. I would assume court's being streamed Friday. I'm going to try to get a press pass. <coughs> anyway. I, I, I don't have time. I don't have the voice right now to go over Levy's letter. I'll have to do that another time. I'll do YouTube every day during the trial if I'm not there. Every day. I don't know if I can write sick notes, Kristen. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> I don't know if Grant's going to make out with his hand. We'll see. It's only scheduled for like 20 minutes, so. All right. Um, yeah, I need to get better. So I'm going to call it a day. Um, oh, Mike McGrath. Me and my wife, 17th anniversary. Happy anniversary to Mike and Jill McGrath. Hope you had a special day. Hope you had a nice 17th anniversary. Happy fucking anniversary. April 10th. Good day to get married. <sighs> All right. Anyway, I'm going to call it a night, guys, because my voice is dying. But uh, thank you guys for all the support. I really appreciate it very much. And uh, see you people on Turtle Club tomorrow for the sex cult. And the last show before the trial is Saturday. So rest up. And uh, we'll see what happens, man. It's time to fuck. About that time. Peace, Turtle Riders.